a passion for what you're doing. This rings true because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, and if you're not having fun doing it, you're gonna give up. Welcome to another episode of John's Entitled Podcast, a partner of MoshPitNation.com. This week's guest is three-fourths of Phineas. Uh, Bryce had to do his tour managing duties, and the irony, as you'll hear me say in the interview, was that I thought I was only talking to Bryce, so it's fitting that he <laughs> wasn't on the chat. Uh, and with me, as always, is Daniel Terry. How are you doing today? Man, if I, I, if I was doing any better, I'd be probably dead. Uh, is that I'd because you, you went and saw Slayer? You got Slayerized? I got slayerized. I got testamented. I got napalm deft. You got anthrax. <laughs> you know, I really wasn't feeling anthrax, but yeah. Um, Your you immunity know, they, must be up. They came up. They came up on stage and they did a thing, <laughs> and then they got off the stage, and then Lamb of God came out and did a better thing. You know. You didn't get caught in a mosh. You know, there really weren't a lot of pits, man. There was a pit for Lamb of God. It was funny. I saw a lot of winded pits when I saw most of that show. Well, wait, you know what? There was a pit for Testament uh, out on the lawn because everybody was running. Because <laughs> the lawn was crazy. And, uh, yeah, because even Chuck Billy stopped. He's like, yeah, lawn, I see you up there. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. I think one of the I, weirdest things uh, for for a, a show like that, like where there's lawn and seats, because like, I saw it in an arena. And it was indoors and nice and air-conditioned. You saw it outside and had to sweat. But I saw an Ozfest many, many years ago. And it was uh, Lamb of God was basically the band before Ozzy that year. And mm. Static X was like a band or two before them on the main stage. And so when I went to Columbus, Ohio to go see the tour, kids were literally ripping up the ground and just chucking it everywhere. And just during Lamb of God's set, I think during to uh, to Redneck. And Randy's like, yeah, motherfuckers, let's throw that shit around, blah, blah, blah. Then two songs later, he's like, actually, uh, if you guys could stop tearing up the lawn and throwing it, uh, otherwise we're going to have to stop the show. And then <laughs> the weird thing is, is like about a week later when I saw it in Detroit, like because it made the news like how people were just literally throwing up all of the turf in the in this arena or this whatever the fuck they're called, amphitheaters. And uh, yeah, then in Detroit – it was during Static X that they did that, and I was like, "You're doing it to the wrong band." <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I think Lamb of God ended with Redneck. Yeah, they do that now. That's like their closer. But the most notable thing of that night was we had a uh, a deaf language interpreter interpreter on stage, and she was like re- kicking so much ass at what she was doing that like Randy like stopped and was like. We just need to give, you know, special props to our deaf interpreter that's out here right now. She's doing an amazing job, and I love coming to the shows, and I love seeing this because this is just incredible. And she uh, she made our local news. You know, it was a, it was a big deal. Yeah, there was a lady – or I'm sorry. I, I do remember seeing that make the news. I do uh, – it's funny because my friend that's a photographer that was shooting the show, he uh, made the comment about how when he posted the photos on Instagram, Randy – uh, comment. He goes, "Are you the guy with the M7 Leica or something like that?" And he was like, "Yes, that was me." Uh, he was like, "I was wondering if that's why you kept like every time you saw me taking a photo, you gave me a thumbs up because you noticed my camera." And I was like, "That's so nerdy." <laughs> Randy Blythe, total nerd. <laughs> oh man. Speaking of nerds, though, we have the band Phineas on. Um, you know it's always- total nerds. Total nerds. Vape nerds. Nerds about Creed. Nerds about Jesus. Nerds about Jesus. You know, I was I was pleasantly surprised that uh, I mean I'm not surprised that a band you know on Solid State that's an openly Christian band would talk about their faith, their religion, and so forth. But what was refreshing was to have Sean especially be so open about talking about just the you know the mental and and physical toll that having people come up to him you know night in and night out at shows and just kind of dump a lot of things on him and the rest of the band and, and what the you know their music means to everybody i think you know it's a thing that i find interesting just because you know it's you know our one day is their normal day and i don't think a lot of us stop to think about that 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were very real about things that I feel like a lot of bands aren't. I can't believe the thing that they dropped about, uh, you know, maybe I should save this for after the interview, but like talking about the meet and greets that were going on oh, yeah. at the big Christian rock festivals where these like big Christian rock bands were charging money to do meet and greets. First of all, I didn't even know that was going on, but they're right. Like, that's bullshit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like totally bullshit. Like, as a Christian myself, it's hard to even fathom that that's even going on you know and phineas is like dude it's happening and it's never gonna happen with us i don't care how big we get i don't care you know how big a stage we're playing on it's never gonna be that way and that you know i was like good man phineas is (laughs) they're 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 good people you know yeah well speaking of the good people let's get into our conversation with phineas and we will talk to you afterwards Awesome intro that Sean just did, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, if you want to redo that with your awesome uh, uh, DeLorean uh, uh, bait pen there with the, uh, the time on it. What up, it's your boy. <coughs> Vape boy for life, 69420. <laughs> what, uh, what, what is your go-to juice for that? Uh, right now I'm rocking some almond cappuccino. Really? And it's got a, uh ingredient called low mint in it. And it uh, kind of feels like menthol in okay. a way, but so not it's quite as like intense. So like a light Newport. <laughs> something, <laughs> something like that, yeah. The idea is to, like, when, as you vape it, you feel like you're drinking something iced. Okay. You know, like an iced coffee. Yeah. But... I mean, that's, it's weird. It seems to be the new trend uh, lately in, in uh, various things. Like, they have those new Sour Patch Kids that are, like, iced. Uh, I don't know if anyone's big on candy. My wife puts Sour Patch Kids in the freezer. And really? Fr- freezes them, and yeah, because then they'll last for forever. It's like her favorite candy in the world. So. I, I have to get hit to that. I never would have thought of that, actually. Like, lasts forever. Like, lasts forever as in, like, you just can't chew them because right. they're frozen. Right, so you get... You just suck on them for four days. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're like hobo Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. mini, mini uh, sour popsicles, if you will. So you guys are, the, I have the pleasure of speaking to uh, three quarters of the Phineas camp. Uh, Bryce had to go away and do his uh, TMing duties. He's probably just taking a nap. but <laughs> He fine. deserves it, right? Who's <laughs> Bryce? <laughs> um, but you guys are here in Grand Rapids at the Stash, uh, playing a show on your small little run with uh, Earth Groans. And yeah. uh, you guys just got off a of Warped Tour. Mm-hmm. How was that? You know, it's a... You know, last year it's going on the full run. I think that's the phrase that no one's really paying attention to. Right. Tour. It's the 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 fine print. The word you know. choice. Right. The last man's warp tour. Uh, cross, the, country, cross country. Cross country. Yeah. Cross country. Cross country. Warp tour. Yeah. <laughs> Presented by Journeys. <laughs> uh, they don't give me money, so I'm gonna leave that. Out. <laughs> uh, so I mean, you know, warp tour is is a very big. Legacy tour, you know, one of the last handful of uh, tours like that. You know, we don't have the Mayhems anymore. The Mayhem tours, the Ozfest are gone. The Slipknot Fest thing is like really the only thing kind of coming around, kind of supporting heavier music. Mm. Uh, I guess outside of the what is it, the Summer Slaughter tour now is like one yeah. of the last. And so I mean, what is it? Still going, yeah. What is it like for a band like yourselves to kind of finally get on the, the tour and kind of do as much of the tour as you did? Uh, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, you know, I went to my first warp tour in 2006 and uh, drove down with some buddies from Wichita Falls, Texas, down to Dallas. It's like a two hour drive. Made a whole weekend out of it. And it's like just one of those nostalgic things that I'll always remember. And then being able to play it, even for just like the two and a half weeks that we did, was, I don't know, it was like the culmination of a lot of. Uh, I, I don't know, a lot of grace and uh, and hard work at the same time. So it is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Dude, it's so funny to hear about like 
you guys' first warped experiences because my first one was just um, the year before this. And that's the first time I'd ever been to a warped tour. And I think like teenage me was like really excited and I got there and I was just like, this sucks. <laughs> it's like, it's just really <laughs> hot and I have to listen to heavy bands all day. But it's cool to see your friends and stuff. But like being a part of the tour, <clears throat> I think for all of us is like definitely a bucket list thing. Yeah. You know, we've been trying for years now and, um, you know, finally we're given a shot. And, um, you know, even not being able to do the whole thing was still like really sick to be a part of. So it was definitely cool. Do you feel like it's sort of as a, as a younger band, kind of like a, a vindicating moment, like a we're kind of at this level, sort of like a, a benchmark sort of for, for the band? I, I would say so, in a sense. I in mean, a way, yeah. It's, I will say it's it's very strange going from something like Warped to where you're playing for a bunch of people every day, and then you branch off on a headliner. And just <laughs> like, uh, um, but I mean, as, as we get further and further away from Warped, like, that's even picking up. Like, last night in Columbus, you know, was insane, and far beyond any of our expectations. I think we had, like, 231 people paid or something, and we're not used to that on the headliner, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of sport tours now and stuff, so it's, you know, to get that reaction and it be like our crowd and our reaction is like, I think we're still pretty like mind blown to some of it. We definitely don't expect that. So I hope that doing things like Warped is adding to the bigger picture of, of what our band looks like, but it's, it's hard to say, you know, it's just like we go out and we do it and then we're just like, well, that was fun. You know, <laughs> like we're just kind of doing what we love to do. And if good things come out of it, then awesome. I had the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just always uh, am a stickler for making sure that I'm not talking over people. Because I know when I listen to podcasts, I hate when someone's just like so quick to try to keep oh going. They're like talking over the other person. Wrap it up. Keep moving. Keep, yeah. keep wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up, box. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what's kind of interesting is, you know, I have a little bit of a history with you guys uh, from booking a show with you guys and having a uh, mutual friend in Frank Vanelli. Uh, I was telling Bryce a little bit ago about how I saw you guys at that show in Muskegon at the random little dive bar that you guys played with, Close to Home, and uh, I don't remember who the other band was off of that. Famous Last Words. Famous Last Words, yeah. You were at that show? I was at that show. Oh my god. I watched gosh. you uh, launch off of, uh, or someone launch off of Frank's back when he like got on his hands and knees and then used yeah. the catapult. <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's been very interesting for me to, to kind of have seen you guys so early on in your careers and seeing how it just seems like right around the time of you finishing the show with me, you were, I think, on the Gideon tour, and it just seems like from that point forward, it's just been, you know, just to, like, rock it on your ass and just launch you into, as you go, you know, between putting out a lot of the EPs, you know, signing the solid stage, just, you know, like, you know, you were saying just a second ago, you know, just constantly being on support tours, it just seems like you guys have been on the go for a long time, have you really had much of an opportunity to kind of look back on it a, a little bit and just kind of think about like how crazy things have gotten in the last handful of years well yeah i mean uh i mean using last night for an example i mean the there are times that we've played in uh we played ohio a good bit of times and a lot of times you know five ten kids if that you know um and barely scraping by and so um, things like last night like that like that was an awesome show you know and so it kind of puts things in perspective to be really grateful for it in the moment because it wasn't always that way <laughs> it, you know there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> barely getting in the next venue um, you know uh, wouldn't say losing money but being dangerously close like for entire tours that was, that was a thing for a long while so um you know i don't it, it definitely like doing things like warped kind of puts things in perspective i like try and look inward and you know remember where you were and and stuff like that because i don't know i 
I'm not gonna say anybody specific. I just feel like there's a lot of like rock star attitude that a lot of bands have, you know? And it's just like, dude, I saw you five years ago playing and there were maybe two people who showed up. Like you, you know what I mean? It's it's Yeah. It's like I, I never wanna I never wanna get that way to where, you know, we don't remember like the hard times, so I think the thing, and I was telling Royce this earlier, and I've said this a couple times on the podcast, actually, last year getting to go to Warped Tour and getting, you know, one of those all-access passes things to where I could just kind of wander around the festival, the biggest takeaway for me as someone who has put on shows and has a lot of touring friends and so forth was just actually seeing the level of professionalism as far as setting up a band, you know, when you're literally splitting a stage in half, you know, striking, you know, not, it, it seems like there's not... And, I, and, you know, I may be wrong. I only saw one day as opposed to a full tour, but, like, everyone was trying to work. It's a professional yeah. thing. Yes, it's about, you know, playing and having a good set, but it was more, this is still a thing where it needs to run a certain oh, way absolutely. for it to be successful. And I was just blown away. Like, you know, you can put on local bands and you somehow run 45 minutes to an hour behind because everyone's got egos and shit. Right. And you see that tour, and it's like, they're able to get a band <coughs> on the minute they're supposed to be on, the other bands, you know, getting tore down, they're loading up the other band, they're sound checking them, so as soon as another band's done, boom, now this yeah. next one's going. And it was just fucking incredible to see just how well oiled of a machine oh, yeah. that was. And that's, you know, between you guys and the bands, your crew that you're bringing with you, the crew of the production crew from Warp Tour, all working so well together and communicating well. And I just, to me, it's just very crazy to see that and I think it speaks to a level like you know that's why I kind of asked like does it feel like sort of a vindicating moment because to me you have to be a band who knows your shit and is professional right. as fuck to be able to be on a tour like that because if not look at Islander they have kicked off the first I think the first date of the tour <laughs> over <laughs> over something that is you know some people you know like head from corn is saying like oh you know I thought it's a punk rock festival that's a punk rock thing so on and so forth everyone has their own but, various take on it but at the end of the day it's like you know, I think someone put it best. If that was your gear and you were playing on a bigger tour and someone fucked up your shit, you're you're probably gonna kick off. Well, that tour. It, it was two weeks into the into the tour. Okay. Okay, and so they hopped on and it was their first day, Small and stage. now so it was on the full sail, but still, full sail has a system. All of the stage crew, the stage manager, the you know sound guy, the the guy who mics up everything, the monitors guy, like they all have a flow going with the bands that are on there that are playing on that stage every single day. And so a band who hops on and, and first day that like, it wasn't just that he was climbing on things as well, you know? I mean, and so there's, it's, there's always more to the story than initially gets put out there. I think right. we've all learned that with, you know, it's a game of telephone basically. And, and I don't know those guys personally, but you know, just hopping onto a tour where the tour is not about you, you need to make sure that you are you do your thing like you you make sure that you gel well with your with the guys who run your stage because I, I mean first off they're probably amazing people second off like they can make your life hell yeah you know and and rightfully so because they have a system that they're going to they're two weeks deep in this 10 week long tour like they don't need to put up with any crap Right. You know, if, if you're disrespectful or you do something to somebody else's gear that they need for the entire run, that drum set is that drum set becomes more important than that band. Right. <laughs> and, and I think that's a that's a reason why like you were talking about war being like such a well oiled machine. It's because like you're gonna get shafted if you're not part of that well oiled machine. You know, it's like every morning, eight AM time to load the truck you know if you don't show up they're just like well guess who's playing first today or <laughs> guess who's playing dead last today you know and so it's like I think that's a reason that you know most fans are like well damn like, we don't want to get screwed on warp so we're going to do everything that we need to do because we understand that it is such like a high demanding festival where people's you know they have say and they can just be like man that Phineas band is screwing up hard like yeah. you know so it's like you don't want to be that band and uh unfortunately Allender was that band I guess <laughs> so it definitely seems like that's a tour where if 
not saying that people are going to like narc on bands for being shitty, but it seems like that's such a, a camaraderie type thing, like an, a tight knit unit, just because I think of like the experience of like when you get done with one, you're like, yeah, that was that was a brutal ass tour. Like it's mm-hmm. hot, you don't know when you're playing, you don't know what's going to happen, you know, nature wise and all and so forth. And it just seems like one of those things that it's like if you are a shitty band or you don't do things on the level that you're going to get exposed really quickly and people probably aren't going to want to work with you. Well, you know, you get invited to play on a professional tour and if you, you know, first day on are unprofessional, that's something that's going to get noticed because the rest of the festival is moving at lightning speed, you know? Um, So if you interrupt that flow, like, it's very noticeable. Yeah. You know? So, um, I mean... You know, there are bands on all the stages where they're big bands and they're following the rules of everybody else, you know, loading in on time, uh, being where they need to be. And so somebody who walks in and thinks that they don't have to abide by that, it's like... You get screwed. Yeah, and yeah. that's what happens. <laughs> like, you know, if... You know, if the friggin' used can, you know, do their thing, be on on time with their set, you know, not break anything, you know, which they would have total permission to do that because they're the used, you know. If they don't do that, like, right. you know, like, yeah. like, are Concepts. you really going to do that yourself? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. so it's, I don't know. It's kind of one of the last work questions I have, and then we'll go into talking about the new record, Dark Flag. One of the things that I always find interesting is because it Warped Tour puts mm-hmm. such interesting and, and diverse bands together, I always love hearing of the people who you end up meeting that you become friends with that you didn't assume you were going to be friends with or a band you didn't assume you were going to like. And I always love hearing those stories. So, like, what was the band for, or the person maybe for all of you guys that you walked away being like, wow, I didn't think I was going to like that band? And was going to, and it just really liked them, and they're really fucking great dudes. Yeah. Well, I would, I mean, a lot of times, like, it, uh, the stage that you're on ends up feeling kind of like the tour that you're on. You know, you're seeing those people like, every morning, like, loading the truck and stuff. Um, and, you know, it, it was a little bit different than I expected. Uh, there were some egos on our stage. I won't name any names or anything, but, like, it happens, you know, but going into it, I was like, man, this is going to be really sick because it's probably going to be a lot of bands like us who are just super excited to be here, so they're going to be down to hang and stuff. And some of those bands definitely were, like, um, the guys in Picturesque were awesome. Never heard of their band before, uh, Warped, but they were great people to hang out with. Definitely hung, like, after the day ended and stuff. Uh, the Dollskin Girls you know, were sweethearts. Definitely cool. Um, and man, the Kublacon guys, not even on our stage, but by by far our best band on Warped, in my opinion. Uh, absolutely the heaviest, but um, just the sweetest people ever. They were great, but I, I'm sure that there were more, but those were kind of my top yeah. people. Um, hmm. Do you have any? I would, I, would, I would agree with Dan, and then Wage War, too. Wage War. Yeah. Wage Wars. Really awesome dudes, sweet dudes, always playing can jam with us after the the show, just hanging out, and just sweet dudes, all of them. They're all good at what they do. They're super awesome dudes, and they just love to hang. So, and um, Kublai Khan murders. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the uh, the kid that you post on your Instagram. I'm waiting for that to be turned into a hardcore merch shirt. The what? The little kid like screaming into the head. Oh like, well, yeah, like, well, yeah. Andy Williams, little, as I like to say. Little Bear Bundra. Yeah. <laughs> I think that needs to be a, a shirt with him on the back with like a, one of your, you know, one of the lines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and since I always like to pitch shit like that on the podcast, so if it happens, I want one for free. There okay. Put it in black and white. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Dude, I could Photoshop in a pile on you know yeah. p- people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the hand motions don't work with this podcast. Yeah, so like you said earlier. You described a pylon. I yeah, yeah, yeah. people would understand that. And like yeah. I said, a typical hardcore shirt would be yeah. the thing. So. Fist bump now. But no, I, I saw that. I was like, that just screams like a, a limited one run like like tour merch or something like that. Oh, yeah. So there's my one my one pitch. Um, 
Speaking of the new record, though, you guys put out uh, Dark Flag uh, a little bit later last year on Solid State, uh, a label that I think a lot of your longtime fans uh, were eagerly awaiting you to sign to. Uh, so, you know, I know you've done a lot of press mm -hmm. about the record, the lyrics, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I just kind of want to maybe get a, a recap of uh, the reception to it so far since it's come out, and just uh, maybe a song that you maybe have been playing that you were surprised people are, you know, stoked on that maybe you were like, wow, I didn't think that was going to be the song everyone really enjoyed. Take this. Um, I guess in reflection on Dark Flag, uh, I, to me it seems like people are latching on to it um, after a little bit of time a lot more than maybe initially, I guess. Like, people have dug it from the beginning, but like, there's a handful of people who have came up to me and been like, yeah, this dude's been in my CD player for the past, you know, six months and now it's my favorite type of thing, which is sick, like, super humbling. Um, but uh, we're playing uh, Break the Earth on this run, and um, that song, like, we had, you know, a handful of people had commented that that's like, you know, one of their favorites off off the new, the new disc, and uh, so playing it live has been a lot of fun. It is very... It's kind of an oddball on on the album because it's a little more. Um, I wouldn't say it's like southern, but it has kind of a. It's got a vibe. It's got a vibe to yeah. it. It's not kind like of overt. Me a bit of like Maylene a little bit. Okay. That's definitely southern. Then, <laughs> then there you go. Yeah. I mean, Never mind. It, it I mean, has I a mean, southern some feel some to people, it. Then. Well, yeah, but I mean, like that was my thought, and I don't know how much that is is because of you know the fact that they were at one point I think on solid state yeah. for a hot minute. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's like that's kind of like the the shitty thing sometimes is like I feel like it's an unfair comparison maybe because I'm I'm maybe looking at one where it's like oh well this band was on the label and you know obviously you know would make sense, you know, that they would probably listen to this and kind of be influenced by that band. Mm. But a lot of times, you know, in, in watching and being a nerd and watching, like, all the interviews and the documentaries and the making ofs and so forth, it's like a lot of people are like, I don't listen to anything when we're writing because I don't want something else right. to seep in. So mm. at that point, it's like, oh, okay, so fair enough. So at that point, it's almost like I try to not think like that because so many people say, like, that's what they do. So it's like, I don't know why I'm putting something else on somebody when they're not even trying to be influenced by something else. Some people get like a uh, oriental vibe. Well, too. My friend but, Alex said it was like a Wes Anderson movie or like a uh, sorry, Clint Eastwood movie with samurai swords. But, but here's the <laughs> I don't, but I did he, know, did he know about the concept of the album, though? No, this is... I showed okay. it to him before we even, like, okay, good, vocals. because I was about to call him a racist. Yeah. I'm a racist. <laughs> I'm a racist. So. But yeah, that, like Sean said, that song, I, I think when we wrote it, actually, we were just like, we're never going to play this. Let's just do some weird stuff. And, like, it ended up being really cool. And uh, I enjoy playing it personally a lot more than I thought I would. Um, it's just really heavy and... Um, has ended up being super fun to play so that's that's been cool but um yeah again like it's it's like when you put out a new record and you watch the progression and um you know now we see just as many kids singing along to these new songs as you know i am lion and flesh killer and songs that it, you know are a few record cycles old so um that's been cool to see does having a song like that that maybe the odd one out that's the odd song on the record but is the one kind of reacting and you're kind of surprised by it does that make you when you start thinking of maybe doing a, the next record or an EP does that kind of make you go well let's get kind of a little weirder in this direction or whatever because it, we did it because we had fun with it and we weren't sure how it was going to be but it went really well, and people seem to like it, so maybe let's kind of get a little bit weirder and see what we can come up with and, and see how that goes. I mean, I feel like that's always a thought going into writing, but, um, I mean, pretty consistently, like, in every album, there's always an oddball like that. Well, and uh, I feel like we've gotten weirder. Just it, uh, We felt that about Dark Flag and, yeah. in general, that it was, like, kind of weirder, but, um, I don't know, that's just our own mm -hmm. consensus of the record. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, going back to the God Machine, there was the My Horses Are Many song, which, which is really sporadic, and there's a bunch of just like dirty riffs in it. It's the one that's toward the 
one of the last few songs on that record, right? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't I, remember. Like, that's kind of the shit thing now about, like, you know, because like, that's one of the reasons I actually like having vinyl. Is because, you. like, when you listen to it, it's more of an immersive experience. You know, you grab the jacket, you, yeah. like, look at it, you're, you're more you're interactive. And then once about the, it. Yeah, and then once, like, the side's done, you know, you, like, oh, I know side B starts with whatever. And, yeah. you know, I've even seen some bands who think for the vinyl now, like, they used to, where it's like, it's an immersive experience. So when side A is done and you start with side B, it's it's we put that song there because it's almost like starting a new a new album. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. so sometimes I get really nerdy about shit like that, where I'm like, I don't know if there's that much thought into it. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But you know, it seems you guys have seemingly a lot of your some of the songs that you guys your fans seem to like. You know, looking at some of your Spotify numbers and iTunes, like your hits. You know, some of the songs are further out on the record. Mm. And so it's like you seem to be have fans that like deep cuts on your records, which right. isn't always the thing. Yeah. Right, that's that's uh that's the cool thing, man. Like the people who love us and support us like really dive into the albums like from front to back. Um, as opposed to just a handful of songs. Which like I He's I at, love Jeremy's going at it right now. Do you think they? You think this is being picked up? Yeah. <laughs> it might be. One second. He's literally doing yes. jumping jacks, screaming the ABCs. Like, yes. Right after they got signed, the most over the top love war moment that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and then he complains about not having energy on stage, <laughs> and I'm like, really? <laughs> like you. Thirty minutes doing <laughs> that. He doesn't just go through the ABCs once. He does it like twice. Can he do them backwards yet? Yeah. I don't know. But then he holds like a push up for right. like a full minute or yeah. something. Yeah, he's, he, he's playing. He's playing. Yeah, pretty much. But, um, going back to the the record, I think um, the goal is, it, uh, you know, for every record that we want, we don't we don't aim to write filler stuff at all. You know, we're just like. It's not like it's the mentality that we're just going to try make hits, man. Like, it's like, but well, we want every song to be great, so we give each song the same effort as the last, you know? And we never know, like, going for? into a cycle, what is going to be, like, the top song or not, you know? So, it's a... You sure? It's, it's a nice. process that is. I'm sorry. No, I'm fine. sorry. This dude's just farting over here. Oh, no, it's, no, it's fine. No, it was. I mean, I was here on Friday talking to uh, Blowfire from Guar, and mm. the thing that sucked is like Guar was or Light the Torch was sound checking. He spit and, blood at you. No, oh. he was. He was just like this. He was not in costume. No nothing. And then. Thankfully, I got him to not talk as Blothar, but as Michael Bishop. Mm. So I got to talk to the person, not the character. There you go. So I think I'm one of a handful of people that got to do that, because the publicist is like, well, they're always in character. And I was like, well, I don't want to talk to a character. <laughs> On an audio podcast, that doesn't really work. <laughs> but regardless. Um, but no, I've had, I actually had Jeremy on a while ago, but then I was here for that. They were sound checking in the main room. Uh, there was a local CD release show happening in the front room where you are, and then there was an EDM show in the basement. So really couldn't get away from any of the background noise, and I was really worried about it, and it actually sounded pretty good. So but it's right. there was a basement. Yep, it's an 800 cap room, and then they have like a 100 and it's like 100 or 80 cap room, like in the back hallway. Oh. So it's like sort of shared. So like when the 800 cap room is going on and they don't have something going on in there, it's just like a back bar. Huh. And then I'm sure you can go down there and check it out. That's tight. Is it haunted? No, it's brand new. They just they just opened uh, it probably three or four months ago. I am that. terrified of haunted place. Yeah, that's not a. What's that place? The the pool. Oh, we played uh, there. The yeah. The and then uh, and then across the street was that place, Helen the Keller. Dahmer. Oh, it's like um, I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, it's the place that uh, Jeffrey Dahmer took like his first victim and uh, uh, was all like, I want to eat children. You know, the thighs aren't the best part. Uh, Science of the Lambs. Yeah, it got all, all weird. <laughs> so I guess since that got brought up, a friend of mine just went to this haunted forest thing that's somewhere up in the UP that I've never heard of where a bunch of people, like a town died or something. That's crazy. And he said that it was like you know, 90 degrees. They went to the, like where this thing happened and it dropped like 20 degrees like instantly. Nope. And then nope. Uh, he was saying that they like some weird other weird shit happened. Like it was on his like Instagram story. And then he goes, and then we heard scratching along the side of my car. And then he goes, when I got out, there was, like, legitimate scratch marks that were not there. Nope. Nope. 
My RPMs in my car will be to like all the way <laughs> past the red. Have you have any of you experienced any any supernatural stuff? No, I don't want to. In, I mean, go ahead. I feel like you psych yourself out for that stuff. So a lot of times, like it's in your head, people freak out because it's like this preconceived thing. And so for me, anytime anything's like that happening, like reflecting on it, I'm just like, eh. you know, it's like how much of that was me just kind of psyching myself up for something that, you know, I mean, who knows? Like, I'm not saying whether or not that stuff is real. I don't, I don't know, but yeah. I feel like I've experienced supernatural in a different way. But, right. I was but, actually uh, gonna go down that route later, but let's, here, let's go down that route later out. then. That's All right. Good. <laughs> so something that's something that's uh, actually go ahead and tell your story first, and then we'll, we'll piggyback what's, off of that. What story? Oh, yeah. that that story? Yeah. No, just like crazy coincidences that I can't uh, you know add up to chance, or I can't contribute or uh, attribute to chance or coincidence, really. So it's not like one specific story. Okay. That's a bit. Yeah. So something that. Has always been interesting to me. I use that phrase a lot, but I have, there's not really another word other than interesting uh, for interesting that I that come up with. Okay. I don't think I know one. Do you? Interesting for what? Another word for interesting. Uh, enticing. Uh, I don't know. I, I, curious. <laughs> um, but curious well, would say that you guys are. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's because like when I when I look it up, I'm always like, God, I say that phrase a lot, but it's like there's not really another way to say interesting. Like I find it interesting that it's like. You know, enticing would be kind of like, oh, someone, like, presented something, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I kind of think of it in, like, more of a lewd manner, so I'm like, oh, I don't think that works for me. Uh, but regardless, I, uh, growing up, like, in getting into metal, a lot of the metal I was into was the late 90s, early 2000s, of like metalcore stuff that was coming out. And, you know, a lot of the bigger names in the indie scene were Christian-based bands, you know, like your Ace the Days, your, I mean, even a band like, you know, you go back to as far as like Earth Crisis with, you know, being, you know, like a vegetarian band or like, you know, you have cattle decapitation, you know, like with what they, their stance on veganism and so forth, you know, there's a lot of other things associated with the music, whether it be straight edge, Christianity, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a, a platform to, to speak on these things. Yeah. And so it's always been interesting. There I go again. What's always been interesting to me is as someone who doesn't identify with any, any faith of anything, mm -hmm. I believe in a strong set of morals over yeah. anything else because I think that everyone can agree that just don't be shitty. Right, right. <laughs> well, I, yeah. No, but totally. It's uh, one of those things where I often wonder, having seen so many of the bands that I grew up, not idolizing, but really enjoying, seeing how they have kind of one way or another seemingly fallen out of their faith that I wonder if being in a band that gets tagged as a Christian band or being so forthcoming with your religion that if it puts extra pressures on you because of being also in a band as well right well I, I absolutely think that it does add pressure um, a pressure to uphold a standard um, and for a lot of people that's very it can it can mean different things um, such as, you know, not drinking beer when, I mean, we're all, except for this guy over here, like we're all old married men who <laughs> enjoy adult beverages and it's not a big deal, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely added pressure and a expectation to where, um, and I think it's a problem within just... American Christianity in general, um, because we have, well, I, I, this is just my thoughts, but, uh, I think that humanity in general has a, uh, inkling towards, uh, worshiping something or someone, um, and, I mean, we were just at a Christian festival called Life Fest where, if you want to do a meet and greet with one of the main stage bands, you have to pay money. And that's the most asinine thing. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy to me that that's a thing. Like, Warped Tour doesn't do that. Like, and people pay. And they go and they, you know, meet their, you know, 
Le Craze or Mercy Me or whatever. I, I don't know those people personally, but I don't even know if they were playing. But that's just weird to me, but it's it's a form of like idol worship in some sense. And so when these people, they have these unrealistic expectations of these people for whatever reason, maybe it's because a lot of Christian communities are detached from the rest of the world. And so a lot of things just like bigger than life to them, you know? Like at a concert and like, oh, these people must be, they're so far above me. Like, no. Like that dude, you know, dumped out in a porta potty just like you. Like, <laughs> like at that festival, you know what I mean? Um, Everyone poops. Yeah. And so um, I think it's the, the unrealistic expectations of, um, of, the legalist American Christianity that really puts a lot of pressure. I'm not saying that that, I won't, I don't think that that justifies the bands who have fallen off. Like, I don't think that that justifies their actions. I think that that's something where like, oh, I don't want to be associated with these people. So I'm not going to ascribe to that anymore. I think that that's, uh, in my opinion, very weak um, because that's your relationship with God isn't with them. It's with God. So that's that's just my thoughts on that. But um, there definitely is pressure that is added, you know, and I feel like we felt that. I'm sure not to the extent that some of these bands have, but um, in a lot of ways, I feel like we can relate to that and see it. Um, so I don't know. Dan, do you have any thoughts? I mean, I feel like you pretty much summed up all of our collective thoughts on that. I know we've had a lot of discussion on things like that. Um, I mean, Christian festivals make for me experience this crap. Like, it's ridiculous. We will never do that, you know? Like, we, you know, Sean probably plays Fortnite with most of these kids. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, there's no charging for that. It's like, why are we going to, you know, they already got to pay to get into the show. It's, it's right. worthless to, you know, I mean, we're, we're we want to be around and we want to build uh, as weirdos and dudes who actually enjoy meeting new people, you know. That's a big part of uh, what we do and part of what makes it fun. Well, another thing that is a little bit and this is a little bit intense, but a lot of people will, um, you know, they'll assume that because we're doing this, we must be, you know, we must be super strong in our faith, whatever. So they just feel completely welcome to come up and tell us, you know, that, you know, just the most terrible things that they've done, you know, and it's like a lot of weight. It's cutting or you know struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts which of course like we absolutely want to help in any way we can but I mean there's a lot of things that we struggle with too we're, you know we're all in that I feel like same pit together so um, there's a, a lot of weight can be thrown on you in that way and there's a lot of things that can be very dark you know and uh, going from city to city, you know, you don't, it, it's, it's a new thing every single day, you know, um, and so you have to hit this, like, mental reset, but then it gets piled on again, and then after the tour, it's like, you, you get mental whiplash, where you're just, like, like, all these thoughts and stuff come back on you, and it's like, wow, I, I don't know if that's, like, getting weird, but. No, I mean, I've, uh, talked to a few of my tattoo artist friends and I was like you know you guys are in the day and age now of like Ink Master and all this thing where it's like seemingly everyone has to have some horrible tragedy happen to them before they get a tattoo and I go so are you guys do you f ever feel like you know cut break therapist where basically you're, you're doing a tattoo for someone and yeah it means something to them but then they just unload all this horrible shit that happened to them and then right. like one of my friends is like yeah so this lady was getting this tattoo and was like yeah, so my husband, you know, abused me and all this kind of stuff, and 
just all this horrible things happening to this lady, and he just basically for the next three hours had to listen to all this her unburdening herself. Right. And then I was like, well, what does that look like for you when you go home and like you have a relationship and someone doesn't understand that someone just dumped all their emotional baggage right. on you that you have to then carry with you in some way, shape, or form, mm. and then go okay, and then like you now have to be switch off my tattoo hat and now I'm you know boyfriend, husband, whatever. Yeah or friend and you know maybe you're taking that with you and thinking about it and how it relies or you know, relates to you or whatever and then someone's like why are you happy why are you, you're not you're distant you're whatever and I don't think I guess I never really thought about it from you know your guys' perspective of being in a touring band where it's almost the same thing instead of having people come to you to unload all their stuff potentially because of your lyrics your music whatever mm -hmm. you're constantly being bombarded with so much energy and emotion that I would assume yeah it's, it's just really it's almost like a purge has to happen at some point right and you know I like I'd never want to discourage somebody from like talking to us about something like, no, you no, know what I mean um, it's just sometimes it can be a lot and uh, yeah I mean thankfully we get to let out you know or, or purge so to speak on stage you know and really have that release uh, every night when we are on tour so that kind of that helps a lot actually so it's kind of cool uh, the set becomes you know our therapy, our therapy. yeah so um but yeah, I mean, it's it's this unrealis unrealistic expectation that we have all our shit together, you know, when a lot of times we don't, like we're struggling, you know, there are things that we struggle with every day, or at least I do, you know, so, um, yeah, that, that's about it. Well, I, uh, speaking of uh, you guys releasing your therapy and having the therapy, you guys are getting ready to play here, so I'll, I'll uh, kind of wrap this up. My last uh, question for you before I have you plug your socials. Uh, I like to end these episodes out to a song. It can be anything. Could be yours. Could be a song that's like the van song that everyone's jamming. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit of a backstory on, on why you chose that specific song. Let the children play. <laughs> 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 Um, just any song that we've been jamming lately? Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I've been listening to this weird dude. He's from, I don't even know where he's from, honestly. Armenia. Armenian. He's Armenian. Piano player. His name is Tigran Hamasian. I think I'm pronouncing that right. He's instrumental, but he does some like weird melody vocal things that he does on piano. And it's just like him drummer, bass, and saxophone player, and they just like shred it. And every single night I listen to this one record while I'm going to sleep. I haven't not listened to it when I went to sleep this whole tour and on work tour. So I don't know what it is, it just freaking calms my soul. And it, I just like to uh, listen to it because everything about it is very um, unique and progressive. The album? The song. Well, the whole album is like that. But oh. the song is, I think it's called Eristia, Arista, or something like that. I'll find it. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then where can everyone find either individually the members or the band as a whole? Uh, it would be <clears throat> Phineas Band on Instagram and Twitter, B-H-I-N-E-H-A-S Band. Um, oh, hi, Bryce. Just in time for the end. Cool. Actually, um, you've just been standing outside the door the whole time, <laughs> waiting for it to be over. And then, it's like uh, a sitcom, you're just waiting for your line to come in, Kramer. So that on Instagram, from that you can find our personal, same with Twitter, and then, uh, you know, there's Facebook, as long as you spell our name right, P-H-I-N-E-H-A-S. What's the best bad spelling of the band name you've seen? Uh, we, ooh, we had one, oh my God. what was the one? Prometheus. Or <laughs> well, 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 yeah, yeah. Somebody brought stage manager on Warped. <laughs> was that Mitch? Yes. Yeah, oh, Mitch. come on, man. Mitch, really come on, man. man. I a lot of like more like mispronunciations than anything. I took fine has. Fine has. Finehas. Finehas. I mean, Minneapolis. That one time was P H I N. Yeah, Finn. Finn. There's Finnamas. Somebody's oh. added an M before. Christmas. Hold on. I, I took a picture of one. Um, 
it was a tent on Warp Tour, and they had us sign their skateboard decks, yeah. and then they were like oh. selling a, like raffle tickets for it or I whatever. And uh, Man, they, they had our name. Like, they had they would have it. Yeah. Signed skateboards, and then they would just go and sell it to <laughs> some kids. And it was like <laughs> sick, dude. Sick raffle. Oh, well, I'm yeah. trying to find it. It's like because I remember the spelling was pretty bad. If I can, if I can't, I'm not gonna be able to find it. What a bummer. If only there was a way to organize your photos better. <laughs> there probably is. I don't really know. Going back to listening things, listening to things, uh, we do some podcasts and stuff too. Like really into uh, <laughs> Play another podcast, do that <laughs> at yeah. the end of this. <laughs> well, I mean, well, he, he has three hours with Finny. It's like, wow, I'm really going to learn you're, something. You're a, you're a podcast guy, so I mean, you know. Yeah. Work in a little, a little comedy to your routine, you know. But if you have it, uh, Chris D'Elia's uh, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Bob, is like really he's so. he's been a great follower. The whole thing about the Lakers signing LeBron, he's oh, like, it great. was fucking great. There was no traffic. <laughs> now everyone's already wearing yeah. the jerseys, and it's it's gonna be a nightmare getting out of here again. Yeah, yeah I, I just say that to say that like sometimes it's nice to take a break. From oh yeah, totally. Listen to music and you know just listen to somebody talk about something. Okay, can I say a song? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to say... Um, I don't know if you're looking at me or so. <laughs> I know. That's why I kind of picked up my head. I was like, who are you looking at? Hmm. Your demon. The collective you. <laughs> Your demon hunter. Yeah. I see my demon. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, hold on. I'm going to plug uh, my co-host uh, other podcast called Discography Discussion. Hmm. Listen to that and listen to their Demon Hunter episode. You're going to get some good laughs out of it. Nice. Especially that song you mentioned. I actually don't have a song. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. So that is... Uh, yeah, that's so are you trying to think of songs to listen to? Yeah, here, here come here. Well, we had the no, one no, no, you had. Hold on, hold on. You already know what I'll say. Just play some Creed. Right. Yeah. Any, anything. Anything by Creed. I mean, I'm... I, Except the one with the... Children keep on dancing. That song sucks. Yeah. I, I may be crazy, but I'm buried in your memory. <laughs> I like the band trade, and I think uh, the fact that. Uh, what's that new band's name? They're not new. They're in so many fucking bands, it's so hard to remember the one that they. Alter Bridge. Alter Bridge. Alter Bridge. Alter Bridge, I think, definitely proves that if you like Creed and you're like the band rips and everyone's like, they suck. And it's like, really? Go listen to some Alter Bridge and watch like how unleashed they became once. You know, Mark Tremonti's solo project, dude. God, God it's Marty. huge. No. Rippity rip. <laughs> but uh, thanks again for taking the time for doing this. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys again. Haven't seen you since uh, show I booked, sadly. Right. But haven't come really back through since then. It's been more uh, more Lansing and stuff like that. I think yeah. we did like one headliner in the area since then. He doesn't need to be on mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. My voice is powerful like Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end it there. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Do not need- so that was my chat with the guys in Phineas. want to take the time to thank them for allowing me to uh, come backstage and to give me, you know, about 40 minutes of their time before they were to go on. Uh, as you could also hear in the background, you could hear Jeremy from Earth Groans uh, doing his vocal warm-ups. Uh, it was very amusing. Uh, if you would like to hear me talk to Jeremy, you can go back into the back catalog and hear me and Jeremy uh, talk uh, when the band had first gotten signed to Solid State. Um, but, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that conversation. You know, sometimes, and I think you kind of have figured this out over the live interviews I've done, uh, I just kind of go with the flow. Um, and I got thrown a curveball every single every single episode I did live with someone in person. I got thrown a curveball that I wasn't expecting, and I just rolled with it. So hopefully, as a listener, it, it wasn't so bad. Uh, it wasn't bad at all, man. It was a nice, long interview, too. Yep. I love that about it, how casual it was. Um, we've been doing, you know, quicker ones recently. And so to get a nice long 40 minute interview like that was good. And, uh, you know, yeah, I actually kind of enjoyed hearing a dude work out his vocals in the background because <laughs> it wasn't too overwhelming. Because at first I was just like, what the hell is that sound? You know, like I can't figure it out. I was like, oh my God, it's a dude screaming in the next room. I just assumed it was a band playing, but no, apparently it was just him. Yeah, no, it was just him. There was the bands that were playing, which I think you can hear a little bit of, but like we were a good probably probably seventy yards away from 
the bands that were playing and, you know, a whole other room away. But as I've said, that, that venue carries sound really well, um, for, for better or worse. <laughs> but Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, you're like that. That's a, uh... But that's like really real. Like I've I've kind of gotten used to listening to those live interviews now, and so just hearing it at a venue, it definitely creates kind of a certain atmosphere. I mean, I'm sure somebody out there is going to complain about it. You know, um, Corpse Fucker Six 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 on YouTube is going to say something about the noise in the background. But you know, besides that, I, you know, I believe good. Corpse Fucker said that we were the noise in the background on YouTube. Oh, was that cor- was that Corpse Fucker? Send my regards to Corpse Fucker. <laughs> I would. He's he's six feet under right now. The the muffled noises probably won't reach him i'm just trying to say fuck as many times as i can on this podcast because people have been complaining that we don't say it enough (laughs) (laughs) yeah i've been told that we infrequently swear uh that if when we do swear it's uh it's never a lot of uh, you know spread out it's never just consistently swearing it's always uh when we do it it's just in, in rapid fire it's just tough because me and John are such classy dudes and fuck classy yeah, dudes are. aren't aren't dropping the fuck bomb every 10 seconds, you know? It's just the way it is. It's like a fuck power up. We we got it the is. power up but it's only for a short limited am- amount of time. We we tend to call it a fuck up cuz yes. power up is is too, you know, it's too vulgar, you know. So you would say it's a vulgar display of power. It's a vulgar display of fuck up. Okay. <laughs> or a fucked up display of power. That's that's, All right, like, good. that's 96 rhymes in this or fucked up fucks in this fucked up rhyme. Is that how that goes? Absolutely. <laughs> that really that whole rant was for an audience of one, really. <laughs> I know, I know. Feel free to cut it out if you want. No, I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> oh, you would. John Beatty always keeps it in. I keep it in. Never kick it out. <laughs> <laughs> I want that on my headstone. Speaking, we're of just talking about how classy of dudes we are. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of, uh, graveyard fucker or whatever. Yeah, corpse fucker six six six. He he keeps he takes it out. I keep it in. Right. Uh, uh, anyway, let's. Well, we got to somehow bring this back. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, you know who? You know who else is also classy though? Uh, our show sponsor, the Bean Bastard. I uh, want to give them. Nick, a huge uh, shout out for sponsoring and continually sponsoring this podcast. Uh, if you head over to thebeanbastard.com, you can pick you up some delicious roasted coffee, fresh roasted coffee to be in fact. And, uh, you know, actually a conversation I've had over the last two days with some friends who have tried it. You know, everyone, like my wife was just saying that uh, people have uh, really enjoy their Death Wish coffee. And then I was texting a friend and asked if she had uh, gotten and tried my coffee yet. And they uh, said that they had, and it was really good, but they're on a monthly subscription to Death Wish. And then she looked up the Bean Bastard over at thebeanbastard.com and said that, oh, they have a subscription too, and it's actually cheaper than Death Wish. And that it was pretty comparable to a brand that she has loved for the last little while. So I'm not trying to say that Death Wish is bad coffee. I'm just saying if you like Death Wish and you think that's the the end-all, be-all for coffee, why don't you throw the Bean Bastard an offer and uh, try some of their shit because you know what? They have the same subscription-based model, and it's cheaper. So what do you got to lose? So follow them also on the Bean Bastard on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, they recently got a new <laughs> little uh, mobile rig. They are trying to get into like a food truck, coffee truck thing, and they bought one, and I guess it didn't work out, so they got a different one. So I'm hoping uh, Nick can come on soon, and we can discuss the trials and tribulations of trying to start your own coffee truck. I think it would be so much fun to cruise down the street in my coffee truck, not set it up and try to sell it. I mean, that's useless. Uh, I'm talking about just the cool wrap on the truck. But anyway, I think it would be even cooler because, you know, obviously with uh, with Nick being the drummer from It Dies Today, you know, he could just go around playing blast beats and shit, trying to get people to. <laughs> that's how he actually <laughs> brews his coffee. He, that's how he grinds them is just by putting them under his double kick pedals and just yeah. having the beaters beat them. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to you guys want to play blast beats like i play blast beats you need to drink my coffee <laughs> yeah trust me on this one we need to have him on discography discussion sometime uh yeah i think that would be really great and uh you know just because this episode has run a little bit longer than the uh the last few that we've been doing i kind of like that nice hour long thing but uh we are actually i'm gonna tease it we are actually gonna end this and we're gonna record a patreon episode 
where Dan and I will break down our top 10. That's right, we're going to do a list. We're going to break down our top 10 active rock songs of the yes. of the 2000s. And I'm only going to call it, you know, butt rock. Yeah, we'll get into that. But uh, before we get to our Patreon, uh, if you would like to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, you can do such at John's Entitled Podcast. You can tweet at us at John's Entitled Pod and email us at John's Entitled Pod at gmail.com. And you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash John's Entitled Podcast. A few different tiers, but we are going to add in. I think we're going to do it probably for $2. Uh, you can hear us do bonus episodes that you will only hear on that. So give us some suggestions of some extra things you would like to maybe have us discuss, and uh, we will get into that. Dan is also going to tell you where you can find him and rating, reviewing, and subscribing. All right, so you can find me at Discuss Metal Dan on Twitter. It's this uh, non-Facebook weird entity called Twitter. And uh, you can find my other podcast, Discography Discussion, at DiscussMetal.com. And you can even email me at that podcast email address, which is Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. All that being said, we love reviews here on the podcast, and we would really love for you to review, subscribe, leave us feedback, send us an email, send us money. Whatever free options are in there, that's what we want. You see, we live in a complex world that is based on recommendations. In order to get recommended to your friends and family, we have to be rated. We have to be reviewed. That lets us show up in, in search results, lets us be relevant. So if you like John's Untitled Podcast, that's going to be your way of helping us share John's Untitled Podcast with the world. So rate, review, subscribe. And if you would like to keep up with Phineas, you can find them on Facebook at Phineas. Twitter and Instagram are simply Phineas Band. And remember to spell Phineas correctly. P-H-I-N-E-H-A-S. Uh, it's not Prometheus. It's not Phineas uh, or any of those fun things that they said at the end of the interview. It's P-H as in fat. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and you can pick up their latest record, Dark Flag, out now via Solid State Records. And we're going to end this episode as we always do with a song. And as you heard them say, and I'm going to butcher this name, they wanted me to play it out to Tigron Hamasayan. And the song is Irisha. Irisha? I don't know. It's a, <laughs> it's a Armenian <laughs> person and uh, probably an Armenian word, and I don't speak Armenian. But uh, the music's pretty interesting. It's uh, It's got really weird, uh, like, uh, time signatures and stuff like that and uh it definitely i could see how like a metal band would be into this so uh without further ado we're gonna play that and uh, i will link the way to actually spell everything in the show notes so if you like it please go check that out uh and we will talk to you next time <laughs>